Ah, Switzerland, good old Switzerland. Who doesn't love the peace fearing and neutral nations stuck in the middle of Europe just minding their stuff? That is until Switzerland has had enough of Europe's bullshit, goes completely nuts, and basically conquers half of Western Europe. And so we will be doing just that by getting all the new Switzerland achievements in one game, added with the new expansion of Hearts of Iron 4 by Blood Loan. Switzerland starts in a complicated scenario, a direct democracy surrounded by three major na nations in the continent. The first option would be to either com stay completely neutral or either warm up to one of these three major powers. But instead of that, what if Switzerland decides to go into the offensive? This is especially important for getting the new four achievements, which requires us, to, respectively, to declare war on Germany and win, annex five states that are not adjacent to Switzerland, have 24 states under our control, and finally win a defensive war without losing any of our mountain provinces. So, getting right into the game, we are faced with our first decision. Do we stay neutral and protect our democratic values? Do we take a stance and be more active defending our democracy? Or we just say, screw it, we're, we're taking everybody down with us. Considering the intro to this video, the decision is quite obvious here. Also a part of the new DLC for all three nations, we have a mechanic called the balance of power. In Switzerland, especially, it's basically divided between the cantons and the federal council. As Switzerland is a direct democracy, naturally the swing is on the canton side, but for what we will be doing, we need to move this swing back into the federal council side. Finally, the last new mechanic exclusive to Switzerland is that we have a president system where every certain amount of time we have to elect one of our advisors to become the president and replace him with a new advisor each time. This mechanic is quite annoying as at the start of the game, since the balance of power is, is with the cantons, you get a reduction of 100% to the advisor's cost. But since we will be moving into the federal council side, this goes away, so you have to spend 150 political power each time to get a new advisor, as usual. But if you do not replace this guy on time, you will get the new guy with some horrible debuffs. So, but you know, maybe I'm getting a bit too far, so let's just elect someone right now. Anyway, Switzerland's focus tree is designed quite differently, where you can take focuses from other branches interchangeably to a certain extent. So to get started, let's reinforce our border with those pesky Germans. Also, those same pesky Germans are spreading their dangerous propaganda to our people, so it's in our best interest to ban it. With the current economic situation ongoing, we could profit off some gold trade, especially with some fellow democratic nations. The global political climate is becoming extremely dangerous, as such, we can't remain on the sideline for long. It's time to set aside our differences and unite to protect our cherished democracy by all means necessary. And something you will see quite often in this focus tree is that if you do certain focuses in the wrong order, you're basically locked out by temporarily, or in this case of the army tree, forever, unless you want to go back to having a neutral stance instead of having the aggressive spirit, so yeah. I guess we'll just fortify the border with Italy. And here is exactly where I was talking about the president system, where I got a horrible advisor for not replace him, replacing him on time. Thanks, Paradox. Now that our government is united under the Federal Council, we shall press for the province of Borlberg, that bore it to join Switzerland back in 1919. The Austrians agreed to our demands, and the first province to join our federation was brought into the fold. It may seem too sudden, but with the rumors of Hitler wanting to take over Austria under the pretense of uniting the German people, this cannot be. As such, the Austrian government is too weak to do anything. We shall step up for defense of the entire Alps ourselves. The Austrian government, seeing no other alternative, decided to unite the two nations, bringing in more new cantons into our glorious federation. With all of our political decisions, it's clear we have to truly abandon the naive notion of neutrality. As such, our armed forces should reflect the same and turn from the militia system into a proper standing army. Side note, this is one of the four focuses in the entire focus tree that allows you to remove the special militia system and replace it with the traditional recruitment system. So, yeah. 
While Austria is secure, Liechtenstein still remains unprotected and out there in the new dangerous minefield that is Europe right now, so it's our duty to defend them as well. So basically this focus implies that Liechtenstein didn't exist, that it only adds the victory point after taking the focus in the province of Vorarlberg. So take it as you will. I reformed the terrible army templates as you have uh, Switzerland. And yes, I still use 20 width divisions. No, I don't care that they made a change in no step back. 20 width still get the job done. And again, I was basically soft locked out of the focus tree, so it looked like it was going to take a while before anything else could happen. That was until Italy decided, Kawabunga it is, by declaring war on Yugoslavia, and by implication, declaring war on the entire Little Entente. So things had gone from 0 to 100 really fucking quick. But wait, folks, there's more. Just mere weeks after Italy going nuts, Schittler also decided to join in on the phone by demanding the Sudetenland, which the cowardly Brits left the Czechs on their own, but France backed them up, so we now had an entire continental war by 1938. I hurried up reforming my army, but the war got weirder as fascist Mexico that joined the Axis declared war on Central America bringing the UK into the conflict, making this an all-out brawl. So I took this opportunity to exploit French weakness and demand their provinces in the Alps, to protect them from death and the madness of the war. Shout out to anyone who got the reference. Most likely they would refuse, but we were ready to fight for our... Wait, what? Wait, they said yes? Uh, I, I guess they just didn't want to deal with another front and just said yes? Uh, okay then, uh, apparently I cocked the entire axis as the only front open was now closed for them. Seeing this turn of events, it was clear our enemy was in fact the axis, so I decided to start building a defensive line for the upcoming war. Now with control of almost all of the Alps, we could declare the Alpine Confederation instantly covering the French provinces. Now it was only a matter of a few focuses until we could stop being a democracy, become not aligned, so we could do some fun stuff as democracies suck in this game. But first things first, we could use some buffs in our new defensive positions. And that's when they noticed fire that Italy had found itself in a civil war, splitting their forces between the bold spaghetti man and the soldier king in Sardinia. Seeing how this weakened Italy a fair bit, I decided to, um, to deploy my reserve units and push for the remaining Italian Alps, knowing full well that this would spark a war with the Axis. But that didn't matter, as we were red. What do you mean they accepted our demands? Uh, well, just like that, they just surrendered the Alps to us, so we avoided the war for a second time around. Uh, well, that's certainly lucky. Since we control all of the Alps now, we can stop the facade and foolish notion of democracy that we tried to keep, and finally hand power to a centralized authority who will defend the Swiss people in this chaotic world, even at the cost of our guiding principles. Well, folks, the madness was not over yet, as Japan, that this, this game decided to go monarchist and join the Axis, declared war on Xinjiang, the same Xinjiang that joined the Comintern earlier. So now we had a full-on three-way war going on. And with me not wanting to miss out on the fun with our new government, I decided to get my first achievement by declaring war on Germany that was losing, thanks to them fighting everyone at once. I declared war on Germany and thought of joining the Allies, but I guess I caused too much world tension for their shitty little club. So my first priority was capitulating the German puppet of Italy, and steamrolled I did as I don't know where the Italian divisions were, but they were certainly not in Italy, so the Peninsula campaign was over pretty quickly.
After the Italian front was closed, I focused my attention to the German border and by concentrating my troops around the southern German states. Eventually, I was able to break through even though the German troops were of superior quality. With the southern German states under our control, we continued our advance into Berlin while also linking up with the French forces stuck in the Rhine. Our forces captured Berlin, but that was overshadowed by the fact that someone blew up the Suez Canal. Paradox, you really need to add generic events of generic nation taking X capital, not just for certain nations, because you know, like, the, ah! with the Germans capitulating and the war not ending thanks to Japan being a thing, I backstabbed the French that were tired from constant warfare. Anyway, something weird happened. For some reason in the peace deal, the only nations were Czechoslovakia, Luxembourg and the other Italy. That meant that France, Romania and Yugoslavia were remained untouched. So, what I think happened is that the game bugged out thanks to the Italian civil war being a thing. And because the civil war ended with the attacking Italian kingdom tag being defeated, this counted as a defensive war because I joined the war but I... because I didn't have peace with France and the rest of the little entente, the achievement of you shall not pass popped out? I, I don't really get it. But on the flip side, because Czechoslovakia was gone, and because it was the leader of the little entente, this made France join the allies and basically the worst case scenario happened as I didn't want to fight the entire allies, but here I was. So, since I, uh, I was at war with basically everyone at this point, I joined the only country that accepted me, and that was the Soviet Union. So, yeah, Switzerland that abandoned neutrality to defend its region, now was at war with the fascist and democratic nations, even though previously it was once before a direct democracy that is now allied to one of the most oppressive regimes in history. I wasn't lying in the title with this being one of the weirdest games I've ever had, in Vanilla Hoi 4. Okay, so just to quickly recap of what happened next. I helped out Spain kick the Allies out of mainland Europe. The Netherlands thought it was a great idea to join the Allies at this time, and as you could imagine, they paid the price. And I basically recreated the Holy Roman Empire's borders with this cursed monstrosity. As this was all happening, I decided to send one of my armies to China and help end the war with the Axis. So my boys, who were all German, Italian and French, had to go through the entire Siberian wasteland just to get to Manchuria to then push out the Japanese out of Korea so that with Russian help we could end the war with Germany that started because of the Sudetenland. Man, this war really be putting to shame those World War I memes. We took Korea and now I just had to wait until we had aerial superiority and the paratroopers researched to begin the invasion of Japan as there was no way I could naively invade Japan with the Japanese Imperial Navy fighting the US and UK Navy too. Meanwhile back in Europe, Latvia thought that declaring war on Sweden would be a great idea. So after dealing with the 78th naval invasion by the British, I had to invade Denmark and Sweden to deal with Latvia's decision.
Anyway, the paratroopers were researched, and thanks to the national spirits, Switzerland gets, I could feel a lot more paratroopers than usual. So, I then turned some of my divisions in the east to paratroopers, and by tricking the AI to remo remove their air wings off the home miles, I got the green air needed and just rushed the hell out to capitulate Japan before their army from China could return to the home miles. The war eventually ended and so the second achievement would be completed as war with Germany was now over. Next, I focused during the peace deal to get as many random cheap provinces as possible to get the Swiss cheese achievement and let me tell you, it's weird getting used to a new peace deal system but after a lot of back and forward I ended the peace deal that also gave me the last achievement of owning 24 states as Switzerland. with some beautiful border gore for some of you weirdos who enjoy this stuff. And there you have it folks, all the Swiss achievements done in one playthrough, in easily my weirdest Hearts of Iron 4 game, and let me tell you, as someone who has, has achieved 100% on achievements multiple times by now, in this game I've seen some weird stuff, but nothing compares to this madness. So that was it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed this video showcasing the new Swiss focus tree and also getting all the new achievements in one playthrough when normally it would require at least two playthroughs. Next video will be all about the Ethiopian achievements, so expect that video to be way longer. If you would like to see more similar content to this one, remember to subscribe as this really helps out the channel. This was the Fexus Expert, you are dismissed soldier.